Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley speaking to you from Washington, D.C., just back from a jaunt to New York City for the uh, opening of the United Nations General Assembly and the big uh, diplomacy around the Obama-Putin summit. So uh, we are back with a, uh, a program which is full of news. Excuse me. Uh, full of news, and that would be um, coming up now in the first segment. But first, let me invite you to another uh, event. And this is here in Washington, D.C. It's on Monday evening, Monday evening, October 5th, this coming Monday, at the National Press Club. Uh, I am going to be the guest of the Capitol Hill Civil War Roundtable. Capitol Hill Civil War Roundtable. And the title that they've given this is Webster Tarpley Discusses the Russian Navy and the Civil War. So this is the question of the Russian fleets. Now, if you've already seen my lecture on the Russian fleets, uh, come anyway, because this one is going to be complete with uh, the best uh, slideshow I can put together. Uh, and uh, I think you'll, uh, you'll be well served if you uh, attend. So this will be at the National Press Club, Monday, October 5th, at 5.30 p.m. Now, 5.30 p.m. is if you want to take part in the dinner, uh, including me and the chance to discuss this topic, but also others, right, with the uh, the Capitol Hill Civil War Roundtable, of course, permitting. Uh, so I want to thank the Capitol Hill Civil War Roundtable. So this will be in the uh, National Press Club, up way up on the 14th floor. And uh, the actual event, I believe, is at 7 p.m., but do come early. Do come between 6.30 and 7 at least. Uh, and then that will uh, allow you to take part in this uh, dinner conversation or uh, post-dinner conversation. If you want the dinner, do come at 5.30 p.m. Monday, October 5th, National Press Club in Washington, D.C. And I'll, I'll repeat that. Uh, I'll have that up on Twitter in particular. Now. Uh, this has been an epic uh, week. It is, in some ways, the, the end of an era, the uh, certitudes of the past 25 years of the unipolar world are rapidly uh, dissolving all around us. Don't waste your time lamenting the passing of this unipolar era. It has not been good. And let's start, not good for the people of the United States by any stretch of the imagination. This was the era of reactionary politics, declining standards of living, cultural barbarism verging on bestialization, uh, a, a horrible time, uh, an eclipse of reason and an eclipse of the human personality, a crisis of the human personality up and down the line, indeed a, a, a terrible time. Uh, so we have, and I'll try to go into some historical background about this, the uh, self-assertion of the Russian Federation leading a coalition, right? You can call the coalition the BRICS coalition, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. You can think of it as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or you can think of it also as the Russian state system, because you have to think about countries like Belarus and Donetsk and Lugansk and, and these places. That's all part of a Russian uh, state system, which has been uh, rebuilt. I say, first of all, the United States has absolutely nothing to fear from this. It's all beneficial. Uh, provided we can get rid of some of the lunatics that have been inhabiting the executive branch. As you know, we of the Tax Wall Street Party are taking credit big time for the ouster of ISIS czar John Allen. We didn't represent the big battalions, but we represented the catalyst and the coordination of the big battalions to get together on a project. Allen out by the end of the summer. And sure enough, with one or two days to spare, in the summer of 2015, Allen was out on his ear, fired, and he is now being followed 
uh, by a couple of other hangers on. I'm looking here at Politico, Politico, the uh, political uh, compendium. Uh, and this is from the 29th of September, just a couple of days ago. Pentagon's top Russian official resigns. The Pentagon top official overseeing military relations with Russia and Ukraine is resigning amid the ongoing debate within the Obama administration over to how to respond to Russian moves in Syria and Ukraine. This is Evelyn Farkas, F-A-R-K-A-S. Evelyn Farkas, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Russia, Ukraine, and Eurasia, leaving at the end of November after five years in office at the State Department. And the word on here is she has advised three secretaries of defense, Gates, Panetta, and now Ash Carter, uh, advised three secretaries of defense on Russian policy, providing steady counsel on how the U.S., should respond to Russia's aggressive actions. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, she got $244 million in support for Ukraine, and she brought fresh thinking to Southeast Europe. She supported Montenegro in joining NATO. She wanted to have cooperation with Georgia and increasing multilateral cooperation with the three Caucasus nations. Now, this looks like a neocon firebrand to me. This looks like a, uh, an operative, somebody who was sitting at a desk and uh, killing people at a distance uh, and wrecking the U.S. position uh, in the world. So um, the question is, how much lethal aid for the Ukrainian fascist regime? Uh, Ash Carter, we're told, is open to providing lethal aid to Ukraine. How dare he say this if that's not the administration policy? Fire him right away if he wants to be uh, a solo player going off the reservation. Um, the president has constrained the U.S. response. Thank God. Constrain it more, Obama. Uh, and uh, you get the idea. Hegel would have been another guy she worked for. Um, so she's out. Uh, that can only be good. Now, remember, we want Victoria Nuland out. Why don't we have a mass exodus of failed officials, the debacle of Syria, uh, we're told now that the U.S. has nine, count them, nine Pentagon-funded moderate terrorist rebels. Boy, if the Russians can find nine moderate terrorist rebels, that's a needle in a haystack. Those Russians must have some kind of uh, GPS or guidance system if they can find nine terrorist rebels. Now, of course, the claim coming from Walnuts, McCain, and others, is that the Russians have bombed the moderate terrorist rebels, his friends, he claims, uh, with, uh, that are funded by the Pentagon. So, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, funded by the CIA. The Pentagon-funded ones are nine. The CIA ones, where they don't do any vetting, those are more numerous. And those are getting clobbered, of course, because they're in a revolving door. They're in the same revolving door with the ISIS killers. So... Right now, we've got uh, a race, and my, my zinger on this is to the Pentagon. If you don't keep pace, you will lose face. Pentagon, get in there and bomb ISIS, right? You're so great. you got the greatest military. Tell us, show us, show us. Don't let the Russians hog all the glory. Get in there and make your own contribution, too. Let's have a peace race. Who can clobber ISIS? Because that's what we need. Uh, the Russian bombing looks very capable. We're now in the third day of the bombing. It was Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Good results. 12 targets now, including Raqqa, the capital. And we've got, however, an absurd piece of idiot diplomacy. Six countries, including the unfortunate Madame Merkel, say stop doing it. We'll be back in just a minute uh, with this on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. So uh, the Russian Federation is doing an effective job. This is serious bombing now. These are not the pinpricks and uh, phony war appeasement strategies imposed by now departing ISIS czar Allen. This is serious bombing. And then we've got the, uh, the Western whiners uh, who were not strong enough to oust Allen for 12 months. Uh, now it's it seems to be done. 
So we've got the United this the, the countries that are saying to the Russian Federation stop doing it. United States, United Kingdom, Federal Republic of Germany, France, Turkey, Qatar and Saudi. They all say stop, stop. You might hurt those terrorist rebels. Those are moderate terrorist rebels. The official US position comes down to saying you can bomb ISIS but you can't bomb Al Qaeda. Let's send a letter to all of the 3911 families and show them that the current uh, bombing policy does not allow anybody from Al Qaeda to get clobbered. And instead, that is what has to happen. So Walnuts McCain, the man who cavorts with cannibals, caliphs, and kidnappers, as he did, uh, arrest McCain for ISIS. Once again, we're back to the same slogan. Uh, by the way, McCain now has a primary opponent. He might be in trouble for next year. This is where reactionaries, evil people can do good by opposing uh, McCain. So he's complaining about that. Uh, the the CIA uh, unvetted rebels uh, exist cheek by jowl with the with the ISIS people and the Al Qaeda people. So they're they're simply uh, inseparable. So this is this is a bunch of malarkey, and it it, it gets very close once again to public support for terrorism. That the U.S. is going to say our foreign policy is based on ISIS and Al Qaeda, which unfortunately has, to some degree, uh, been the case. Now, the Russians, uh, what are they doing? It's very obvious. You have got to stabilize Assad first. The main bulwark protecting the world from the ISIS butchers and madmen is the Syrian Arab Army, and I have learned to respect them. As I think I mentioned a couple of times, I visited a military hospital in Damascus in November of 2011. I was um, impressed by the bravery, by the, um, the, the sense of duty of the wounded soldiers that I had there. And I told every one of them to the extent that I could, you are, are in the front line of civilization. And uh, there are at least some people in the Western world who understand your sacrifice and who thank you for it and are grateful because you're the front line against civilization, the, the point where civilization collides with barbarism. So you're in the front line. So what Russia has been doing, quite obviously, is to bomb the most advanced rebel positions, not really caring whether it's ISIS or al-Qaeda or Nusra or this phantomatic free Syrian army, or whether it's one of the 150 to 200 other uh, groupings of lunatics. Remember, the principle for Syria is this. The opposition is in parliament. There are opposition deputies in there. They're in there. So they can, if you want to oppose Assad, uh, you can do it. When I went to Homs, the governor of Homs had a communist and a wealthy woman, and they represented different opposition groups. And we talked to them. And that was the opposition then and now. A lot of opposition groups have realized the uh, gaping uh, abyss below them if they get caught up into ISIS. So they, they've come back to the parliament. Anybody out in the uh, countryside or in a city with armed opposition is a terrorist. It's just that simple. If you've got a Kalashnikov out in the, out in the slums or the countryside, you're a terrorist, and that makes you fair game. So Russia bombing the advanced rebel positions— Protecting Assad. If there's any question of the collapse of Assad, the whole thing is over. Uh, you've got to have a ground force. Remember, the, the bombing works best when you've got ISIS bunched up against the Syrian Arab army or the Kurds or Hezbollah or Iran. And we're hearing now that there will be a joint effort. It's even possible that China could join in it. This would make the world consensus overwhelming. The United States simply cannot go on with a foreign policy based on supporting terrorist groups. It's just that simple. It's got to end. And the people who are arguing for this are lunatics, and they've got to be fired. And that's Newland and Power and uh, quite, a, quite a few others. I forgot to say Ambassador McGurk, the scurrilous uh, sort of, uh, what can we say, a personality out of Boccaccio's Decameron. Uh, this McGurk uh, has been calling himself ambassador when he really doesn't have a permanent uh, title. So he's a fraud. Don't let McGurk take over Allen's job. He'll simply continue the wreckage uh, wrought by Allen. Now, 
Uh, there's a conference going on today in Paris. It's a summit. It is Germany with Merkel, France with 